so I've talked quite a lot about this car, but I haven't actually done anything on it um, other than change the wheels over. But I've actually got an MAT coming up, so fingers crossed on that one, especially because the car hasn't run in ages. But uh, that being said, uh, what's the chance that if I just whack a charged up battery in it, it starts the first time? I think it's pretty high because these are that reliable. Um, let's get a battery in and see. Right, battery's in. Car's completely cold. Um, let's have a look. I think it will start straight away. I've really jinxed myself here, but let's have a go. Check it's not in gear. Two hands, the old wiggle. Right, what do we think? Didn't even prime it. I just something about these old Hondas, they're just... Just unstoppable. Look how it's idling. Unbelievable. So anyway, so that's all running. I'm just gonna quickly see if I can move the car forward and back. So the brakes might be seized on by now. Forward a bit. So he's done. That is a win. And um, all that is inside the car, not outside the car. So uh, that's very good. And uh, I don't know. I'd love it if this car could just fly for an MOT. We've got drums on the rear. Quite corroded discs. I'm sure a little blast to like, clean them off. And other than that, I just need to get something to attach the battery. It didn't come with everything, it came with this. Um, but it didn't come with that second hook. But I'll be able to nab on that CRX. So before I started it, when uh, it was completely cold, I've just put the battery tie down on there now. And like I said, I had to borrow this one from the CRX. Not great, but I've got another one coming. So that's all good. So it runs and drives. So we've got a bit of a problem on here. Come out of water in there. Um, that's kind of there, but it's coming from the front, I think. It's wet here as well. And so I think probably the roof guttering it's usually got these drains from the sunroof they go down they get blocked and then they back up and then the water runs down there and ends up in there but that's really not very good that's the first time i've seen that right the car went for an mot um it did fail anti-roll bar drop link um exhaust emissions but that's because basically i think the midsection to back box has got a leak so that's why it sounds like that uh, a brake pipe uh, it's corroded and a coil springs fractured so I believe that we can deal with most of these things with parts we can buy um, the one thing that I'm not really sure about is the exhaust leak first because I don't necessarily want to buy a full exhaust system for a, a 1.4 when that isn't the engine that's going to end up in here so let's have a look at the exhaust first and see if we can fix that on the cheap or not so I think this is the joint in question so this is the Bat box, oh no it's not, I've just seen something. The bat box is completely rotten. And it's the original one, it's the Honda one. So that is our problem. And I'm gonna need to do something about, I mean that's completely the whole way through, you can see. So it's a new bat box it needs to get the uh, MOT, but I can't believe that is the original Honda bat box. So I've undone the uh, bolts to the front some uh, WD-40 on it 
and then I'm just using this tool here just to take off these two um, rubber mounts. There's one there, and there's uh, one there. There you go, catch of the day. This is the original Honda Honda Yunaka Yunaka and it is knackered. It's got a hole in it. So this is the uh, midsection there and this is the little olive and I'm just going to prise that thing off with a flathead ready to get a new one on. This is what they're saying about this old thing. Get it off. Here we go. It's just an inch and three quarter um, olive. I actually don't have another one. This is too big, so I'm gonna have to buy another one of these. Onto the exhaust, this is a very cheap exhaust. Um, you can see the one I had before. This is the original Honda. Um, let's see. Yeah, Honda Yitaka. Yitaka, Yitaka. Well, anyway, here was all the rust. So that's obviously no good. And this is my new exhaust. Um, you can see I've obviously bought a one and three quarter um, olive or gasket, whatever you want to call it. And here's the old crusty one, so I'll stay with that. And then I've borrowed the exhaust mounts, these rubber mounts again, because they were they were all good. And this is what we have. It's a GT exhausts, or it says that there, it says Regal exhaust here. Anyway, it is what it is. I think it was like 25 quid, something like that. Um, hopefully it fits. Um, it looks to be the same in terms of this part, but this is obviously quite a large silencer here, so I'm just fingers crossed. Also, it seems like a smaller bore here, but it's only a little diddly engine. I hope you're making a difference. And this is my one and three quarters little gasket. So if I come in here, first off, I can just place the light underneath there. Hopefully you can see this. And I'm just come in and place this in here like so. Um, so that's in there. And then I just need to whack the exhaust in. Um, so I'll go underneath the car with this. I've already put a little bit of um, silicon in here and here. Um, so that should help the job of a better view of the uh, little gasket I've got on there. It's there. Um, these are the stations I'm going to be placing the exhaust up and in. And I uh, need to thread it through, pass the LCA and just whack the bolts on. It's all fairly simple. So now I've got the um, silicon spray on these. I'm hoping it's going to be a doddle. This is what's happened. The uh, ball joint separated from this uh, arm. So it's obviously not doing anything anymore, and that's one of the MOT failure points. These things can sometimes go back themselves, but it's best to be uh, slow and steady with them. See, I've taken the fork off. Simple matter of taking this long 17mm out there, and then just slackening off the 14 there, and the fork come out. But that gives you a straight shot onto this very, very rusted bolt. And now I've got a uh, 30mm socket just hammered on there, covered in WD-40, and that looks like possibly that's coming off. Now I took that fork off, I may as well take this um, suspension strut out because if you see up there, um, you can see the spring's actually broken, snapped. So I'm going to just um, undo these two top bolts up here and then the suspension strut come out. So we can really see what we're dealing with here. Nice break there. Uh, that's all I'm going to do is take this off. Um, I won't have to compress it too much, but I'll get the spring compressor on there and compress it a little bit, and then whack this top knot off. So I've got this quite fancy Draper Expert um, spring compressor kit. You could just use the more basic ones, but I'm gonna give it a go with this one, and I'm just gonna compress a few of these coils and see if it just takes the tension off it. This is snapped, that's why they're so close, but taking the tension off the bottom, I'm just gonna 14, just whack that off. I'm just going to use the Allen key and the 14 mil, that looks like it's a uh, five and a half mil. That's right, Alan, which is a bit strange, but there we go, and just uh, undo that. There we have it, there's the nut off, then it's this little washer. Try and leave it all 
kind of the same way it came off in this little top hat. This is coming with that bit of spring, which is a bit strange. So that will come out of there. And then I can just unwind this, which happens to be on a 21, which is a bit strange again. But unwind that and then just take the spring off. So this bit comes out there. It's ready to go back together with the new spring. There's half of it, here's the other half. And uh, obviously trying to mess this around too much, but there's another little washer that goes there. This thing comes off, the bump stops there. The bump stop actually looks in pretty good condition. So I just need to wait for the new spring to turn up. So quite a worthy test at this point. If you push the um, shock in, should slowly rise back up. Um, so that's one thing. And then check that there's no like weeping, which should have been covered in the MOT anyway, but there's no weeping down the actual shaft itself. So I can just simply put this little cover thing back over here and the washer and then wait for the uh, spring. To take off this um, anti-roll bar drop link, I've uh, backed it out as much as I could, like I said before. And I just need to slit it because really um, what happens is the end of the bolt gets corroded, then you can't do much about it. So I've got these new, very thin cutoff wheels. Um, you can see it's 0.8 mil, so nice and thin. Loaded that onto the um, grinder and then I'm just going to slip them off and uh, that will be that. So I'm going to take out the uh, tie rod end, track rod end um, and that is just taking the nut out the bottom and uh, then you can just give this a few, a few solid smacks and that's out of there like that and that gives me a lot more space for the grinder. Now clearly as always eye protection Ear protection and you can see it's gone straight through that whoa it's gone straight through that and uh, that's done with the tool nice clean cut and then just poke this out here and uh, that's quite hot that's the other side so these are definitely to be recommended and it's the uh, Norton um, Quantum, and these are uh, legit. The KYB K Flex, um, part number is that. And uh, it's very simple to do. Basically, I'm just going to um, compress the spring slightly with the um, compressor I've got, place it on here, put the nut on, and all the bits and compress it, the reverse of what I did to take it off basically. I want to be in as ready a state as possible. So the bump stop is on there, the little washer is there, this little cover thing is over the top of those two. Hard to do one hand but you get the idea. Then this washer and then I'll just be whacking that over the top. A fairly good place to be. Notice that's down there. The whole thing's facing the floor in case it wants to fly off. And then I'm just going to place this washer in here. Is that one around? And place this over here like that. Okay. And finally, this one over the top like that. And the nut like that. And I'll just do that one up. Uncompress this and check the seat's all in a nice position. And up the four team as much as I can do without uncompressing this. Um, and it sits quite a way down. This goes here, like that. And the other thing, the other bit of the spring goes up in this, but you can't quite see it, but it's got a little ledge it sits in. I can just start undoing this. So once you're happy, you can just make sure these are in the right place. And it comes out of there like that. And then this has been tightened beforehand. It's a 14 mil. That's pretty much your shock all done and dusted. Just need to place this up and in with the two um, bolts holding it in the uh, shock tower. And then lastly, we'll fit this um, fork. So it's up here, these two um, 40 mils. And then down here, the fork's just loosely placed on. And then you need to get this little line that's at the back lined up to this little slit in there. Important, it's very important to know that you've got this little 
peg um, where it needs to be um, in line with uh, these bolt holes but this peg goes in the back of this fork so my finger is there so it's just useful to know where everything needs to line up um, and then you can fit it. There you can see that little, um, but you can't quite see because of the camera, but that little groove goes in the back of there and with the bolt out you can slip this up in there and put the bolt in. Just looking at the rust coming off this car I think it was a very fair comment that this uh, suspension setup is very rusty so no complaints there. So if you're interested this is the part number for the Farron um, and throw bar drop link, doesn't matter what it's left or right, same. And these are nice because they've got the uh, space to put a 14mm um, spanner on there. So just quickly do them up like that. And uh, pretty much done here, just need to put the uh, track rod end back on. Again, put a bit of copper slip on there and uh, get a little split pin in, and that's it. So you're not going to forget this, uh, which is the long 17mm uh, bolt. It goes um, straight through here and the suspension fork. Final thing to do is pretty much get a bar. I've just hooked underneath the um, fork there, suspension, and just up that 17mm on the bottom of there for the track rod end, tie rod end, uh, just there. And then I'm just going to put a little split pin through that. And then we are basically done for two of the MOT failure points so the spring and that anti-roll bar drop link yeah there's the split pin done final thing is pop the bonnet and just make sure those two uh, 14 mils that hold the suspension strut tight 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 with an allen key in the top it says 5 mil and then the 14 you can just hold that there and just check that's tight and that's all done so that is everything done at least on this corner. Here's the brake pipe that's corroded. You can see there, it's really far gone. So I'm gonna to need to take that out and um, trace it to where it needs to go, but it could be quite far. Right, so the brake pipe comes from up there into the hard line. The hard line goes under the tank, back here. See there? there underneath the tank and ends up here and then runs the length of the car so it's kind of going to be no real joke replacing that um, but at the same time it's completely doable first job of the brakes is identify which one's which happens to be on the uh, right hand side of the car so nearest to me this line going the length of the car is the one I want to sort out which is right hand side rear and then the first thing I need to do uh, with that would be take the trunking down so you can see it's on a few very rusted um, if I show you this one for example so rusted that it's not even doing anything anymore and some other uh, there's a 10 mil down here somewhere you have to take my word for it but you can take this all uh, down and I need to kind of unclip this. It's got these little stations in here. Let's see where my finger is there. There. So I need to kind of just I think use some pliers and pull that apart. First piece off. And this isn't too difficult, but it seems the best way that I've found is just using a screwdriver. If you get between one and the other, you can kind of flick them off and they'll come out of these holders, but it's just a Gotta be careful to not snap everything. Sample here, just pull it back and pick them out. Have it, those two uh, metal covers are out, and I've just left one of the holders in there just to kind of keep things where they need to be. Um, you can see there's one here, and this is the one removing. And one of the next things we're going to need to do is drop this tank down so I can get to the uh, actual line stopped me and that's this uh, brake line I need to replace you see part of it's actually underneath this exhaust so it doesn't really make a lot of sense placing the exhaust on just for that to be in my way so I'll just hold off on that exhaust for now and I'm just going to take this full line out you can see over here I've taken if I shine on it a bit better I've taken out that little um, it's not really little runs length for the car 
um, kind of holder, plastic holder thing. So taking that out and that shows you which line is um, broken or and that shows you which line's corroded and it's actually one nearest me on its own there but it, it runs underneath this fuel tank which is a bit of a drag but it's easy enough um, I just need to drop the tank so you saw before I was spraying these um, bolts up um, and it's got these other bits of the strap which at the front is 14 mils um, which you can just about see there so what I need to do is go inside the car take out the back seat pop off the cover and um, just take off all the connections and look to be dropping this tank down. Just um, pop the boot open um, and look at this car. I mean, look at this. Has anyone ever seen a tool kit? It's not only original, but it happens to be kind of mint and unused as well. I and mean, probably you have, but that's just crazy for me. But either way, I'm kind of used to slightly older Civics than this. So. Maybe it's normal, but this all looks pretty good. Um, certainly no rot in the boot. Uh, and then all I need to do really is undo this 10 mil there. So there's probably a few people thinking pretty stupid here. Maybe I am. Um, basically, I've never taken uh, one of these back bench seats out of uh, an EK before or EJ. So you just undo that and then popping the seat forward, you can just pull this thing out, which goes on there like that. So that means I can finally take your seats out. So just pulling that up, um, got this seat out, and it's got these kind of pegs at the bottom here, which are pretty happy in their location. I don't think any of this has been moved for a long old time. Um, either way, easy enough once you know how, which I didn't before, but easy to work out. Now this is um, completely different to when I'm working my EF, and my EF, it's got this awkward little hole, no real access. Um, to the fuel tank, but this has got much better access, I think. Think, so I just need to undo these four screws, pop this cover off, and I see what I'm working with. Screws leaves me this access panel. Again, probably never been off. Here we have it, and as I thought, gives you much better access in the EF. I know this is a video about the EJ, but I'm just saying the pain that you have with the older Civics, or at least the EF. Um, is that the fuel pump is underneath the actual this part of the car so you can't really do anything um, either way so this is quite nice both my fuel connections are there and available to me and then we've got the uh, electrical connection here all nice and simple so I'll just quickly um, undo the electrical connections which are under here so this thing has to be nice probably never been moved so this thing here and then undo these ones which is just um that's just some pliers and that's just a little quick connect and this uh tank should come down quite e pretty easy this is a quick connect so you just come in the side here push one side pull it up push the other side pull up and then that comes off like that and then this is just some pliers we'll do this job um, just come in on both sides and then just move that a bit to there and then you can just force this um, back with two hands there we have it they're off and i tell you what that is much nicer than with the older cars um that'll just come straight off down and then i can just probably take this quick connect and just grab that um maybe it's just happy it's happy is it is where it is it's not going to fall off here we are 12 mil 12 mil 14s at the back are always an option um, if you're having issues, so I'd issues use that one. But I prefer to come this way and do just finish off this 12 mil because I'm going to be wearing the whole thing. So now that this one's out, um, I can just simply pop that down and I can have a better go at that 12 mil. I'm of course getting a little bit ahead of myself because I need to drop the um, filler and neck and breather and I need to undo these little well, if that's even going to undo, who knows, but undo this little panel to get to that. The cover came out. These little plastic things didn't come out that well, but it doesn't really matter because this reveals the two things I need to undo. This being one and that being the other. These two were all right. Uh, this took a bit more persuasion. But the both final thing I neglected to do is disconnect this little evac pipe. Um, so I've done that now. It's just this little spring clip thing. 
and, uh, and this pipe here. The tank is now fully ready to come out of the car. Unless I've forgotten anything else, which I don't think I can have done, so there we go. She really is a rusty old girl, um, but still seems kind of sound. Um, I don't know if it's actually uh, any more than anything surface, but perhaps I could get a new fuel tank. Um, anyway, back to the job in hand. Um, after that, it's always annoying when you're doing a job, but basically to get to the actual job, takes you more time than doing the actual job. But, uh, welcome to working on cars. So this is what we actually want to do. It's this brake pipe here that goes round here, round here, round here, and then oh, here, and then it's this one here that goes the length of the car. You can see we have it loose now. So, all I really need to do is um, disconnect all these 10 mils. There's one there, there's one there, there's one there, and then it goes the whole length for the car. And then you've actually got the union, which I've already started to get off anyway. So it's quite an easy job, it's just um, long winded because you've got lots of steps before you can do that. So I'll probably take this uh, hanger down first and start knocking all these 10 mils off. So it's very good practice just to kind of zip tie everything, um, everything to the tank and everything to the car. So I've done that. It's a good place to uh, stop for now. And all I know is that I've done almost everything I need to do with this car. This is soaking in WD-40 and it's uh, all good and moving. And this over here, down here is moving as well. Um, the one that's a little bit shiny, it's got the WD-40 in it, so that, that's that's fine. So now there's nothing really holding this um, line in, apart from obviously those two connections. Left myself with what should be an easiest job, and it's just to take off this um, pipe here. So there's nothing else holding onto the car apart from this connection and down next to where the um, drum brake is. So I'm just going to back this off now and probably lose a bit of uh, brake fluid. That's why I've got a bit of rag behind it. So that will just leak back onto that rather than go all over the bulkhead because I could do without that. And um, yeah, let's just take it off here and then I'm going to have to um, drag the whole thing down or maybe cut it and uh, that might be the easiest thing, but I'll have to back this off first. So there we have it. It's out. And now I just need to uh, pull that whole brake line down and out. Cut through the pipe underneath there with this tool here. It's um, quite a nice little tool. It's made by Sealy. It's the premier brake pipe cutter. Either way, um, it's a bit awkward otherwise. It's such a long bit of pipe. But if I just show you this now, the one thing that's important is there's different types of um, basically connector there's the ISO and the DIN and basically what it means is some of them are double bubbled if you like and some of them aren't um, so if you look at this one here um, and I'll show you how to make the same profile as we got here I've got this little connector to deal with so I've already got it started um, so not too worried about it so I can just simply undo that and then drop that and that's the whole pipe down it's off there like that now it's just a simple matter of trying to get this out it's just a bit caught up because it's just the way it is but you see it's dropped down there and i just need to pull it out now. so here they both are um just make sure you try and contain the brake fluid as much as you can print from going everywhere um happen to be the same uh style so I can just make that using my tool. Um, the tool in question is going to be this one here, which is the laser brake pipe flaring tool. There's different ones you can get. Um, the ones which, the cheaper ones, are not as good as I found in the past. So I've bought this, which is a bit better. Um, because basically, this has a little forming tool on there. So you can see here, it's uh, 3 16ths. 
Um, it can't be any of the others, uh, any of the other ones because I don't even fit down the diameter. But anyway, you basically, it's very simple how to use this tool. So wind that tool out of the way. Here you can see it's three sixteenths on the upper and lower part of the former tool. If you pull this thing down, then you can just basically place, place your pipe in there and then use this part of the forming tool the other side. And what that does is that um, pushes this cone part tool down on top of this and makes this um, shape which is like a bubble and then uh, once you've done that uh, well, I'll show you that first and then you can use the cone to make the same shape that you've got here so it's kind of like a double flare you're doing so I'll show you the first part of the flare anyway you can't forget is you need these little uh, connectors which are the same um, as what we have on here so that way you just place uh, this on here, like so, or I'll put it on this side, and then you form your flare, and that butts up to it, that tightens into either the hose on this end, or that um, kind of five-way valve body on the other side. So, let's put a flare on it. The job I'm gonna do is poke this up and in, because um, I think it's gonna be very difficult to do that um, after I've got this flare on here anyway. So I'm just going to put that up and in the engine bay and then I'm going to do the flare in the engine bay, put it all where it wants to be and then pull the um, line back a bit and start rooting it. That's going to be the easiest way. So I've got this little protective cover on there for now and I'll just poke it up in there. Right, so I just went below the car. You can see I've just poked this uh, brake line just up there. I'm going to try and get a kind of similar route. Um, but beforehand, I'm going to put this little flare on. Top tip, um, just put the a uh, little connector on first and uh, tape it in place so it doesn't slide down and you lose it and then go ahead and put the nipple on. I've got the uh, pipe just in here like that and there's a certain amount of um, pipe you need um, to be protruding from here. Um, too little and you'll never get the shape that you want on it. Too much and it will actually kink the pipe um, where it goes into the tool so I think that's about from memory about the right amount and then you just basically place this former tool onto there and then um, drive that cone thing on top of it into place and uh, that gives you the initial shape you want. Right, my camera ran out of battery, um, but you can see what I've done. It's just there, it's obviously the coppery one. Goes down, goes down there. Um, this isn't exactly A1 work, but um, it's gonna get the job done. And then now I'm just gonna plumb that into the back. Um, and that's it really, let's go underneath the car. I don't know if I'm too big. Well, I probably am, but I can't even get underneath this car very well. Um, I need to raise up the axle stands a bit more because I'm getting kind of wedged. But anyway, it's my fault. Right, here we go. You're upside down. You see the, uh, this is the line running here. It's just all coiled up there. So all I need to do now is just run it down um, this little line holder here to the back. So as I go, I'm kind of clipping in this conduit thing, kind of goes in there like that. And I'm not gonna put it all in place completely until I'm done. And it just goes up here. I'll show you what it looks like when I'm more finished. This is where we've got to. Um, I've attached these little uh, black tray things as well as I could have done. And then you see the new line comes out here, comes along here in that little clip. There's another clip here, there's another clip here, there's another clip there, then out towards the uh, rear drum brake. So now I just need to go um, finish kind of underneath the car here. And I'm just going to put the uh, flare in and uh, touch it to the rear drum then I need to bleed the brakes. First of all I just need to cut the brake pipe to size so that will probably be about right um, so I'll probably cut it about here but I'll leave it a little bit long just in case I make a mistake and then I you know, it's better to have a little bit more I'm gonna bend it up out of the way anyway so you can use this little tool here and all it does is this little wheel that does the cutting and then this um, little wheel that you use here just pushes these rollers onto it and you just go round and round and round and then it will cut through. It's all in action so you just go round a couple of times 
and then tighten this wheel here, go around a bit more and just tighten it. Oh, there you go, this cuts through a nice sharp cut there. Now let's put the flare on. This is very important, make sure you put this little connector in here, like so, and tape it up. Um, and then you can, well here's the tool, you clamp it round, make sure you have a good amount um, protruding from the end there. And then you get this little forming tool, and because we're using um, three sixteenths, the smallest one there, you place that um, in here, like so. And then you just flick this thing on here, like that. And basically this cone bit ends up pushing um, the die, if you like, or the former onto that bit of copper pipe and it creates the first flare. I'll show you what it looks like when I've done that. So this is the first part of the flare. You can see it's um, a bubble flare at the moment. And then to get the flare you need for this Honda system, you need to press this cone um, into that flare to get the double, the double flare in there, you can see. It's worked out quite nicely. Then I can just remove this tool and then bolt it up. So this is why I've um, taped this thing in place. Um, I can just remove this tape now. All right, and that is it. So now I just need to form this back up and round, and just uh, thread it in. Agree, it's like a robot did it. So that's all done. Um, all I need to do now is bleed the whole brake system, um, which isn't a bad thing to do on an old car anyway, starting furthest away from the mast cylinder. So if we come back around here, I'd be interested to see how much fluid we've lost in that whole uh, game. Let's have a look. So we're not fully down to the bottom, which is pretty good news, but we'll still obviously have a lot of air in the system. Um, so all I need to do now is um, bleed the whole system and that is pretty much how you do the brake um, pipe on the Honda Civic. Let's have a look, see if I like it. Yeah, I mean it's, it could be neater um, but it certainly isn't the shabbiest job I've ever seen. Uh, it's actually quite hard when you've got the whole engine in to do a really neat job and probably when this engine comes out I'll redo all the pipes and do a really neat job. But for, just for the MOT's sake, um, I think that's gonna do it. So, let's just uh, bleed the brakes up now, which you've seen me do a million times. And uh, that's it. Right, I'll just quickly bled the brakes. Um, Bruce seen me do this a million times before. Obviously check your reservoirs topped up. Got a one man bleeding tool. Um, crack the bleed screw off with a eight mil single hex and then just actually used this um, eight mil spanner just to kind of operate it when that's on there bleed pulls down there and uh bud up perfectly now i've got um firm brake pedal i'm going to go over to the other side and do the other rear as well and i'll bleed the fronts just as a you know good will gesture um and that shouldn't take too long uh and then then we're done. Right, the rest of them all bud up uh, well, so no real air in any of them, as I expected. There's no leaks here. Uh, and there are no leaks on here. So I've done a good job there. Then I just need to make sure this is topped up. You see it's kind of on the minimum level almost now, so I'm gonna just top that up a little bit more. Um, and that is the brake done. So now I'm back with uh, the fuel tank. So put the fuel tank in, and then once I've done that, I can put the back box in. Um, it's all fairly um, simple. It's just a bit of a pain to have to do it yourself, but um, it's what I'm gonna do. So just wrestle this back in um, and not forget any of the connections. Should be good. My setup, one strap's there. There's a bottle underneath um, holding up the fuel tank. Really nice thing about this car is you can come in here and you can see the peg down there. 
and that's um, where the fuel tank wants to be sitting. And all I need to do now is push the fuel tank up and in. Page one, get this um, tank strap just on, at least a few threads. Still held up by the bottle. Oh no, it's not anymore. So that's good. It's kind of held by itself. Tighten this one on a little bit more so it's a bit less sketchy than that. And then just do up all these connections. It's a good time to also check that you're okay up here. So we've got our two connections there. So if they were trapped or pulled down or something, you'd be a bit stuffed. So I'll connect, I'll uh, take off all these zip ties and connect these up. They're just up in there now. And I can just place the little uh, connectors on just with these. Get this little uh, breather as well. That just needs to go up in there. I've actually connected up the other strap because um, I needed to take the tension off these. So then I can just push them the whole way home and put those clips on. Right, those two are done. And I just need to put these little cover things on. Whether I really need to do that or not, I might just leave them actually. So my light has just died, annoying. Anyway, uh, this is very easy. You've got the uh, feed. So you can just push this in here, like so. Maybe two hands would be a bit better. But basically, like that. Okay, clip, and that shouldn't be going anywhere. And this one, to the end, get your, oh, I need the ball nose, get the ball nose and push it to there. Now, the electrical connectors. So these are well, just these little push fit things. So I can just simply just push both of them in and do up this. One's for the fuel pump and this is for the fuel level sender. Now these little screws, four of them, and then I'll just put the uh, seats back together. Bench is in, um, it's got this 10 mil underneath there and these two poppers that go down. Then this side of the uh, seat goes in and then you need to put this, which is the bracket for the um, right hand side seat that goes in like that. Okay. So it's all quite simple when you know how, but I've never actually taken the bits. Well, that's not true. I have, but like uh, a long, long time ago. So now last seat in, and then the uh, interior is pretty much built back. Here is all back together. Final job. Is the exhaust. I've already got that new gasket in there. Um, and then all I've got to do is push this exhaust back in. Um, and that's it, put the two bolts 